Hello everyone, we are in Pirkei Avot, the second parak, Mishnah 14. I just want to reiterate again, just so no one's confused, that if you're looking at your version of Pirkei Avot and it's not Mishnah 14, uh, that makes sense. Uh, just again acknowledging the fact that there are different um, girsas, different versions of Pirkei Avot that seem to, that bunch some Mishnahs together and separate others. So we're just going to go that this, this is Mishnah 14, even though that might not technically be the case, at least in your version. Fine. Uh, and of course, secondly, you are, of course, free and welcome to, to share this if you enjoy it um, and if you think someone else would benefit from it. So here we are. We're in Mishnah 14, and we are in at the third of Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Yochan and Zakkai's Talmidim. That is Rabbi Yossi. So let's see what he has to say. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Yehim Amon Chavecha, Chaviv Alecha Kesherecha, Right? Let the property of your fellow be as precious unto you as your own. This translation is provided by Sepharia. Uh, make yourself fit to study Torah. For it will not be yours by inheritance. And let all your actions be for the sake of the name of heaven. So Rabbi uh, Yona makes a, a four-word comment on right? Let the property of your fellow be as precious unto you as your own. What does he say? Uh, in, to do what its owners would want to be done with it. Now, that is an amazing comment because the way I think, uh, that's this is certainly the way I understood this uh, um, Mishnah at face value was, okay, I want, I would, if someone had access to my savings or whatever, if I had some fortune that someone um, had to watch, I would want them to invest. I would want them to invest responsibly, a little bit in this, you know, stocks and and dividends and real estate and uh, businesses and cash flow. Fine, that's that's that would have been my preference. What Rabinion is saying is we understand that that's what you would want, but those are the specific actions you'd want someone to take. But the general theme that we're looking for in someone who's going to watch over our property is are they going to do what I want them to do with my property? And so Rabinion says, don't zoom in on the, spe on the specifics of what you want done. The whole point is when you go meet with someone who's going to say, like, run your account um, and say, like, okay, do you understand what I want? And will you be loyal to that vision? So, too, when we say, let the property of your fellow be as precious unto you as your own, it's not, okay, invest it the way you'd want it to be invested. It's that, no, do with it and act on the vision that you would want to be, you'd want to have, an act, like, in the same way that you want your property to follow your vision, so too with other people's property, you should follow their vision. Because for you, it might be investing, and for someone else, it might be it might be donating to charity. Or even when it comes to specific, specifically donating to charity, there might be causes they feel more attuned with. For example, some people might feel Binut Chasadim is the way to go. Other people might say, I'd rather invest in Torah study. Other people might say differently. Maybe people would want to focus on the city as a whole. Other people want to focus on their specific community. And again, there are, there are certain perspectives that we might have on this, uh, or that the Torah might have on these. But the idea is, think of what the uh, the owner of this property would want to have done with it, and enact that, because that's exactly what you would want to have done. It's not about the specifics. It's about the overall vision of what you're hoping to accomplish with your property. Amazing. Uh, so that's Yona. And that's the first... Bava of the Mishnah. So moving on. And um, make yourself fit to study Torah, if it will not be yours by inheritance. Okay, so just breaking these up into two. So Rabbi Yonah says, Make yourself fit to study Torah. How so? Says Rabbi Yonah, uh, right? By with good midas, with good character. There's a famous saying, Derech Eretz Kadma La Torah, that Derech Eretz comes before Torah. That is to say, you need to be a proper vessel in order to accept the Torah. If you don't, if your character is not in line with the general vision of the Torah, then there's going to be trouble when you encounter it. So first, we need to prepare ourselves with our characters, and then we can start learning Torah and uh, enacting the Torah. Fine, so that's that's one. Oh, and there is a second thing he said that was uh, really interesting. He says... Right? To to have to indulge less so that we can learn more. This is again very intuitive. You could just imagine the scene. 
are you going to learn? Let's just say, I, just a classic night, I'm not trying to pick on anyone or anything, but Shavuos night, right? There are almost always treats, uh, whatever we are. And our question is, okay, well, will, we be, will you be spending every like, half hour, you go for a little 10 minute coffee and ca coffee and cake break, or you can be more focused, like, look, maybe I'll get my coffee because I need to stay focused, but I don't need to have cake every, uh, you know, every, uh, every 30 minutes, 45 minutes, hour, whatever, at the point, it doesn't matter, but you can see how doing that on a regular basis is going to take away from your Torah learning. And that's true, obviously, on a daily basis, not just once a, uh, once a year on Shavuos night. Okay. And then, She'ena Yerushalach, right? For it will not be yours by inheritance. So it says Rashi, that's because people might be inclined to think, look, my father was a massive Talmud Chacham, I grew up in his house, the Torah, is, it's going to come easy to me. I, it's, just, it's effectively just going to fall into my lap. That's incorrect. Torah comes through hard work, and says Rav Aaron Feldman, and through hard work alone. That's how a person succeeds in Torah study. You want to be a gadol like your father? You want to be a Talmud Chacham like your father? Fantastic. That's a wonderful and noble thing to do. You know, set yourself to work for it. That's how it's going to happen in no other way. And that's in contrast, again, to a Yerusha. What's a Yerusha? That uh, our parents build up a certain amount of wealth. They pass away. Uh, and then just fall, falls, to, falls, to, falls to the kids. But that's not the way Torah works. It's not automatic like that. And then finally, right? let, let all of your actions be for the sake of heaven. Now this is a, this is a really beautiful thought because first, it really orients our entire day and all of our actions in it. In terms of, there's also a pasuk that says, right? in all of your actions you should come to know God. And that's what this whole idea is of the um, all of your actions should be for the, for the sake of heaven, uh, in the name of heaven. What does that mean? What does that look like? We know mitzvahs obviously have to be done for the sake of heaven. We're doing it because heaven commanded it, because the Kodesh Baruch Hu told us to do so. What about, what about eating? Or even sleeping? So there, what's your orientation? Right? What is our orientation? Why am I eating chicken, eating cake, having a salad? What's the point? If it's just, oh, because this really tastes good, or because I'm hungry, okay, so we don't want you to die, so you have to eat, so you don't die of starvation. But it would be different if we say, I'm having this chicken so I can have the energy to serve my creator. Matt, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sleep, but remember, just, it takes five seconds before we go to sleep. I'm sleeping so that tomorrow I'll have the energy to be a good and honest employee to stay focused at work, to stay focused in my learning, to be a patient husband, to be there and aware of my children and not to snap if they have, uh, if they throw a temper tantrum. All those, and again, all those things in context of, because I want to come closer to God and to serve him uh, in, in my daily actions. If a person thinks of that before they go to sleep, instead of just being unconscious and doing nothing throughout their sleeping, now it's a mitzvah. You've turned sleeping into a mitzvah because your, your five second orientation before we, we went to sleep completely changes what the purpose of that sleep is. I'm sleeping. Why are you sleeping? Because I'm tired. Okay, fine. You're, you're tired. But it's like, I'm very tired, and I want to have energy tomorrow so I could go about my day with 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 a, with a zest and with joy, and I can serve God in that way in everything that I do. Aha! Uh -huh. Now now we're talking. Now the your whole, your whole day has been transformed into just another day, as opposed to an opportunity to connect to Kodesh Baruch Hu. That's a completely different story. And just to add on, this is a, a this is a uh, a fairly well known incident that's recounted in the Gemara about uh, someone named Rabbi Elazar ben Dordaya. I heard this explanation by Rabbi Zevlaf, and we'll get to it in a moment. So, who's Rabbi Elazar ben Dordaya? He was an individual who was a, uh, a a an individual of ill repute who was intimate with every har harlot who he came in contact with. Um, and he was so depraved, in fact, that he was with a particularly sought-after harlot, and even she was said, you are just you are just beyond redemption. And that struck him to be told this by a well-known harlot uh, that hit hard, and he started to see the kind of do tshuva, and seems like he was just completely beyond, uh, beyond repair, 
the damage was was so deeply ingrained that he was just he was just gone and he took his head put it between his legs he was just crying and crying and crying until his soul left him i.e. he died and at that moment the bat call came out and said Rabbi Lazar ben Rodaya is a ben olam haba he, he belongs in, in the next world in the olam haba wow and they called him Rabbi right he's, he's a rabbi now um, and that in itself I will admit the story bothered me I didn't like it and I certainly did not like the add-on and by Rebbe, as in Rebbe Huda Anasi, i.e. the compiler of the Mishnayot, a Tana, a person of such immense spiritual stature that it's hard for us to even conceive of it. So what did he say? He said, uh, he said, pull the source. Rebbe, on hearing it, wept and said, one may acquire eternal life after many years, another in one hour. And so, you know, I couldn't help but think that's, you know, you're contrasting Rabbi Rabbi Huda Nasi, the spiritual giant, to Rabbi Elazar ben Dordaya, who he did tshuva, but it was so painful that he literally had to die from it. And that was his finest moment, his uh, perhaps even only moment. I wouldn't understand this comparison. You're going to, you're, are you really trying to recreate Rabbi Huda Nasi to Rabbi Elazar ben Dordaya? How does that work? And so Rabbi Zevlaf says, so the reason why Rabbi Huda Nasi was weeping, why was he weeping? Because he saw what one can do with every moment of one's life. You know, what do we think? We think like, oh, you know, we have to go through this whole this whole process. We need to, um, you could say, wrap fill in or go through these uh, sinna sukkah for, for seven days. We have to do this davening for six hours on Rosh Hashanah or even just uh, Shabbat. You know, it takes, takes a long time, two hours. During the week, 45 minutes in the morning, an hour perhaps. Um, all these things are long processes and takes time in order to build that Olam Haba. And says Rabbi Huda Nasi, he said, no, actually. The Chiddush of Rabbi Lazar bin, bin Rodaya is that every second, every moment of one's life brings with it a corresponding capacity to relate to God and to come closer to Him and to build one's Olam Haba. And to that he wept. And that's amazing. That's an amazing lesson for us because we think like, okay, what's the point? Like I've I have, a, I have five minutes to kill. Is if just we just check time, right? Or I have an hour to spare, or I, whatever. Today I have nothing to do, so I may as well just kind of veg. No problem with vegging, as long as again, what's the orientation? Are we looking to decompress, to relax, that so we can then set out on our next week in, in full service to Kodesh Baruch Hu? And if so, then today is also a service when you relax, when you take some time off. That is because we see again from Rabbi Lazar ben Dordaya that every moment of one's life, it's possible to form that connection with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. We'll leave it there.